Joining the highly anticipated return of an animated Spider-Man movie is another kind of man, but much more spooky, plus a romantic date night option, a sketch comedy show that critics adore, and a season finale from one of the most biscuit-centric comedies on TV. We've lassoed up some great wrecks for you on this week's What to Watch. Being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. Swinging into theaters is the sequel film Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Five years have passed since the animated Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse became somewhat of a surprise hit, racking up a certified fresh 97% on the tomato meter. And this time, to less surprise, we're happy to report that Across the Spider-Verse is also certified fresh, currently at 96%, forecasting good vibes for the inevitable third installment Beyond the Spider-Verse due out next year. Another reason to hurry up and see this one is that Miles Morales, aka Spider-Man, will be venturing out, as this film showcases at least six Spider-Verses with each having its own distinct look. Think of the world of 2099 in one dimension and the 1970s Japanese Spider-Man show in another. Of course, with all that comes new Spider-Heroes too, and joining returning stars Shamik Moore, Haley Steinfeld, and Jake Johnson will be names like Issa Rae, Daniel Kaluuya, and Oscar Isaac, whose Spider-Man 2099 had a brief cameo at the end of the first movie and is playing a larger part in this one. You're both having these manifestations. What is this supposed to be? It's the thing that comes for your kids when you're not paying attention. Creeping into theaters is the supernatural horror flick, The Boogeyman. Yes, a horror movie in June. This one is about a terrifying entity that preys on the suffering of a family who just lost their mother slash wife and is based on Stephen King's 1973 short story of the same name. And that right there may very well be reason enough to check this one out. But it's also worth noting that this creeper was written for the screen by Scott Beck and Brian Woods, who wrote A Quiet Place, and Mark Heyman, who wrote Black Swan. We call that qualified for the job. The Boogeyman is at a respectable 65% on the tomato meter, and a consensus from the critics saying that while it may not live up to the source material, it's got a spooky atmosphere and some solid performances. Plus, you know, it's a horror movie in June. I didn't Another theatrical option this week comes by way of the romance drama Past Lives. This film is about two childhood friends who reunite as adults for one fateful week, where they explore ideas of destiny and love in what has been described as a heart-wrenching modern romance. Along with an interesting premise, another reason to look at Past Lives is that it stars Greta Lee. She's had a steady career but recently broke through by stealing her scenes in Apple TV's morning show, and now she's getting a much-deserved starring role. The film was directed by Celine Song in her directorial debut, which is made all the more impressive by the fact that it's certified fresh currently at 96%, with an audience score of 91%, aka, it's good. Showtime! We're gonna go nuts! Ha! Ho! Whoa! Ho! Whoa! Ho! Whoa! A strong streaming option for this week is season three of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. This sketch comedy series was co-created by and stars actor Tim Robinson, where the main premise of each segment is to try and drive someone to the point that they want to leave. Gotta love the originality. Robinson was previously a writer on SNL, and that connection remains, with plenty of hilarious guest stars stopping by like Andy Samberg, Cecily Strong, and Will Forte, to name a few. The first two seasons are certified fresh, at 96% and 100%, so they ain't messing around, with last season's critics' consensus calling it a triumph of sketch comedy. Enough said. I love you guys so very much. On three, one, two, three. I love you guys so very much! Misha! And finally, also streaming this week is the season three finale of Ted Lasso. While it's coming at the end of a third straight certified fresh season, which is reason enough to catch this episode, it's even more important because this could be the end of the show itself. Star and co-creator Jason Sudeikis has said that this all began as a three season arc, and that's how the third season was approached. So while the show may still continue, we can at least say this story arc is ending, and that's something. Season three was a little slower for critics to get into, but they eventually got on board, the consensus heading into the final episode is that viewers who believe will find that they appreciate Coach as much as ever. Well, do you believe? 
Okie dokie, fresh friends. That's five solid directs to give you that much needed mental break this week. Be sure to let us and your fellow viewers know in the comments what you did check out, whether it was on this list or not. Remember to check out RottenTomatoes.com for the latest updates on scores and reviews for everything mentioned, as well as the movie and TV world at large. That's all for today, Fresh Family. Until next week, stay fresh.